Hi and welcome back. Another update on the Monogram Amphibious Weasel. So when we left off, I was getting ready to start detailing some of the parts, shaving detail off that I didn't want to use. And I have done so. So here is the front deck. I have uh, removed the molded on fire extinguisher got rid of that so now I can actually put this in place on the vehicle um, then I originally was going to take the uh, tools off of this uh, this back deck and as you can see I started that once I started cutting this stuff off, I discovered that this plastic is ultra brittle, really brittle. When I go to cut a piece off, even with my, uh, to me, a cutter, it has a pretty sharp blade, um, parts just went flying. I mean, just little bits of shrapnel everywhere. So, um, and it would it would just be a real bear to try and get that smooth. So, in in the interest of uh, doing something different and save myself a little bit of time I just cut myself a new upper deck so this part was on here like this okay so all I did was flip it over and uh, using my favorite scoring blade which is this type of blade right here from uh, Exacto I just laid it flat you know in the handle of course and just scored and scored it quite a bit and then um, popped it off. This part right here is the channel between the, that goes behind the main deck and the back deck. It sits about right here. And the muffler and muffler protecting screen, protective screen is in this, this channel right here. So I wanted to use this because this, this is okay. It's just, you know, it's good. It's got a good structure to it. it. Doesn't have any detail, so I didn't have to worry about repairing anything. So I'll discard that and using this as a template and using some evergreen um, sheet styrene, I found the uh, thickest one which was 0 .040 inches and basically traced out a new deck, cut it out and uh, sanded it to size. So what will happen is whenever I put this together this part you know once the two halves are together this part will go here uh, like it's supposed to in between then this will rest on top of that just like the other part did and then once I get in place I will sand the edges um, flush get it all nice and uh, smooth and looking nice then I've got my hatch cut. I will glue that in place. Then I'll uh, I'll cement some rivet detail and some of the other detail that was on the the deck. Uh, this round, I'm assuming that's a fuel filler. So I will uh, I'll scratch build something for that. Put it in place, and then I can take my. tools I'll have to find an axe I have a shovel but I'll have to find an axe and uh, I'll put those in place and then I'll do the control rods and the linkage for the rudder um, do all that after it's installed on the hull so I can get this installed this part and this part installed on the hull with the other decks and then I'll be able to uh, sand everything smooth get it all flush looking good and then I can move on so I'm gonna start gluing some of that together and then we'll take a look at what I have Okay, over here you can see I've got a clamp or clamps. I've got the deck glued in and the um, windscreen frame installed front deck. So uh, I've got all that cemented and I am letting it cure for a bit because of this seam on the front right here. I want to make sure that sticks together really well. So while that's drying, I'm going to take this part here, which is uh, it fits right to the right of 
the driver gauges um, looks like a almost looks like a glove box of some kind or you know might be to get fuses or not something whatever I am going to um, on the top of this are the molded on handles or uh, loop connecting points or whatever they're for uh, it's a bunch of like little supposed to be loop handles so what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna cut these off sand a lot smooth and then I'm gonna add uh, wire or stretch sprue handles in place of these just so they'll look a little bit better these are just kind of not only are they you know solid but even if you look at them in profile they're slanted that way so it looks just kind of weird so I'm gonna cut these off get that sanded smooth and then see what I can come up with as far as uh, new handles um, made out of something else that looks a little bit better and while I'm thinking about it just to give you an idea what this plastic is like listen carefully hold on one second turn off my fan because I don't want my video to be unwatchable due to horrible noises in the background um, see if you can hear this that is some brittle plastic and it's flying all the way across the room so I'm going to be doing some vacuuming here soon but anyway it's really brittle and uh, that's why I opted to handcraft that instead of using the other one because that stuff's really something so anyway just wanted to show you how brittle that plastic was so I'll move on and come back in a minute alrighty then so I've got the uh, deals cut off I'll do a quick sanding on them but in looking through my spare parts, I have found the solution to my handles. Um, I had an extra sprue here from <coughs> my Academy uh, M4A3 Sherman with the rocket launcher, the Calliope rocket launcher on top. And it has three of these handles here, which are perfect for the what I'm wanting to do on here. I believe, let's see, yep those will work nicely and then I have uh, the remainder of them on this uh, remaining sprue from the Academy M3 Stewart Honey. Uh, this good reason why you should keep all your spare parts because they come in handy so I'll be able to use all these right here and what I'll do is these little attachment points here I'm gonna cut them off flush on the bottom and then just glue these directly onto the uh, onto that control box or whatever that is right there that cover glue those right on there so that's what I've decided to do with that so once I get that done we'll take a look and see how things are coming all right, so the two halves have been glued together, and uh, as you can see, there's a pretty gnarly looking seam. I've already started working a little bit on it right there, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, should be fairly easy with the sanding stick to get that smoothed out. Same with the back, the seam right here, underside. Honestly, I'm not going to worry about it. You're not going to see it. That cutting corners, yep. But nobody's gonna see it, so I'm going to cut that corner. Um, so now the one seam that I'm kind of wondering what I'm gonna do is this one right in here where this deck meets the front, uh, the bow of the uh, vehicle. Um, that's kind of gnarly looking and it looks like it's going to be quite a problem to fill. So, you know, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to fill it or not. Because I'm not sure I want to deal with uh, that much of a headache. But, being the persevering guy that I am, I'm probably going to give it a shot anyway. Then I'll have to fill that one in right there, that little uh, seam. Which shouldn't be too hard. Um, I plan on using, at least for that seam, I'll be using uh, 
Bondo glazing spot putty for that. Um, so we'll see. And then for this one here, it, it's it's a raised seam, so that one should be pretty easy to take care of. Same with that. Just it's just gonna be a matter of sanding it smooth to the uh, adjoining part. Um, then I got the uh, this part here done. Got all the handles glued on. So when it goes into place right here, it'll look a little bit better like that. So instead of just being blobs of stuff, these are a little bit larger than uh, the original handles showed, but you know what? They look pretty swinging to me. Um, so anyway, I got that. Again, I'm not going for total accuracy here because I'm really at a loss for finding uh, decent photos of uh, this vehicle. Um, for some of the stuff. So, you know, it, again, it's just a, really an, it's an exercise in scratch building and uh, detailing. So it should turn out okay, but... Anyway, got that part done. So now I'm going to work on uh, these seams for a little bit and then uh, we'll check in again. Moving further along, um, as you can see, I've got quite a bit done here. Uh, some of the things I've done, I cut off the uh, weird handles I was talking about, glued these on, um, filled in this crack, and then rescribed it a little bit. You should be able to see it a little better. The framework around the headlights, I was going to make a new framework, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to thin this one out. Uh, so I sanded all the way around it to make it look a little bit better. Um, all the parts have been installed. The only parts left to actually install are the, uh, the covers that go over the tracks and the tracks themselves. But I won't be doing that until after I uh, paint. And here is where it stands thus far. Um, I've got all the building completed, including all the scratch building. And everything has been primed slash painted because I used the acrylic olive drab surface primer. So that's my paint and primer coat. Uh, I've also got the tracks primed on one side. But this is where it stands. The modifications I made up to this point. Uh, let's see. Are the um, the grab handles that I discussed earlier. I got all those installed from the spare parts bin. Um, the front, the uh, headlights, I was going to redo the frameworks on the headlights, the guards, with some photo etch, but I opted instead to sand them down um, and made them a little bit thinner, a little more to scale. It's pretty easy. I just sanded the outside edge. Uh, let's see. The, gra the uh, steering levers are scratch made because I either lost or threw away or they weren't in the box the ones for the kit um, the exhaust here's the exhaust here and basically how that's going to work is this is the kit supplied exhaust and I guess the mesh guard let me zoom in a little bit yeah That's basically it. It's this big old blob of plastic. It's got like a mesh detail to it, but the ends are totally flat. There's no detail at all. There's, it's really, I mean, you wouldn't even know what it was unless you knew from the instructions. So what I did was I scratch built an exhaust using evergreen plastic tubing 
two sizes and a large size and I used a uh, just a regular one of those paper hole punches and punched some plastic some really thin evergreen sheets uh, made some ends on both ends of this large tubing then I cut some small tubing and I drilled some appropriate size holes in both ends I used uh, heat to bend one to go down into the uh, engine compartment and then this one here is just the, uh, the one coming out and I thinned it out just a little bit because it was kind of thick tubing uh, but I got that um, built and then to go on top of that uh, I still have to make a framework and uh, just simple framework on the ends I used some aluminum screen, I got it at the local hardware store and made a cover. It fits perfectly down inside of there. So I just need to make some uh, a framework on the end and a reinforcing piece there according to photos I've seen of the real exhaust. That way at least you'll be able to see that it is an uh, exhaust and muffler. And what I'll do is I'll do this and paint it separately and then uh, that way I can rust this then install this before weathering. Um, let's see what else did we do here. As I noted, I replaced the deck, made this um, access hatch from scratch. I had some uh, little bolt heads and screw heads on a leftover sprue from another kit, so I put the bolt heads on here. Uh, made a filler cap here. Uh, then I here I pretty much chucked everything else but this is the uh, kit rudder and as you can see it's quite a bit thicker than the one I ended up making and really root crude you know basically just had a bar going across these control rods we're molded onto the deck. That's another reason I tossed the deck. So I scratch built that, made this little um, box where the controls go in and the control cables come up. Just made that out of a piece of scrap box, something I had in my kit in my spares. Chopped that off. Stretched sprue control rods. Then all of this linkage here. Um, I scratch built all of that. I just basically got some uh, evergreen sheets, cut them into strips of an appropriate width, bent them to shape to make all the control linkage. Then I used on this part right here uh, where the rod goes through, I just used some leftover photo etch fret, cut that, rounded it, drilled some holes and made a bracket for the rod to go through. Then I got some more plastic, scratched, cut that down, um, rounded it. I'm going to install, I almost forgot, but I need to install some little bolt heads on the inner and outer edge of these parts here. Um, use these as a template because the, the outside shape is good, it's just the thickness was bad. So I used that to make a template on some more thin uh, styrene sheet, cut those, use some stretch sprue and bend it to make the uh, the actual brackets that they're attached to. So that is it so far. So it's painted, I put those bolts on and uh, finish this up, get it painted and then I can start weathering. So, with that, I'll call this video complete, and uh, stay tuned for another update as I progress with the weathering and the final little bits and pieces. So, as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and see you next time.